Hey everybody, Mark Edward Lewis here from cinemasound.com. Today we're going to be doing a little shootout between the Hindenburg uh, Digital Audio Workstation and Adobe Audition. Now, admittedly, Hindenburg is really designed for podcasting. So some of its features and functionality are going to be reduced, whereas Audition really is a full function, full feature digital audio workstation. But let's see which one of these actually works out better in general. Let's roll. All right, we're here in Hindenburg, the audio editing station. Again, it's specifically designed for podcasts and audio casts and things like this. And it's got some really great features, including the ability to do a grouping of channels and tracks and the ability to do all kinds of markers and adding chapters, which is really, really super, uh, especially when you're trying to do podcasts instead of having to go back and deal with it again. Very, very useful indeed. And as you can see, it's very easy to add more chapter markers. They get stored. You can rename them to anything you want, and then they get stored in the audio file as you export. Audition does the very same thing, only in a much more robust way. And as we talk about in the Adobe Learn, which is built into Audition, uh, you can actually do lengthwise duration-oriented markers to help you deal with breaths and cutting out all kinds of things like that. So what are some of the things that diverge between Hindenburg and Audition? Well, the first thing is how we edit. And whenever we're doing a podcast or something of this nature, we want to be able to edit quickly and deal with that kind of. And one of the main things we want to do is be able to heal any editing that we would do. So as you can see, if I have the cursor above, I get the arrow tool, which allows me to slide things around. And below on the object, I get the time selection tool, which is nice of a multi-tool. Once I select this here, I can hit Command B on the Mac or Control B on a PC, and I have split this apart. I can hit Delete, and I have a hole here. And from there, I can hit Command Left Arrow, and it heals that hole very nicely. And in fact, if I want to do this with a breath, which is probably the better way of doing it, let's undo, undo, undo. Check, one, two, check. One, two, check. One, two, check. Good. Let's say we wanted to get rid of this little hole right here and the little weirdness that's there. We do this again, command B, we hit delete and left arrow and it's healed. Check, one, two, check, one, two, check, one, two, check. Real seamless like, we like that. We'll do this, we'll kill this and we'll open with just the voice itself. Check, one, two, check, one, two, check, one, two, check. Nice. But the issue with this is I had to add an extra keystroke in order to do this delete and heal. And you're like, well, it's a keystroke. It doesn't really matter. Well, it does matter if we're doing hundreds, if not thousands of these edits every time we have to do any kind of production. What we would ideally want to be able to do is delete and have everything healed and have the ability to do that and not to do that. But here we have to do an extra command. We have to hit delete. Well, of course, we have to select, delete, and then use a command. And also, it becomes a little bit cumbersome when we're needing to do that generally anywhere else. If there is a, a healing here uh, that needs to be happened that didn't occur from a direct edit, we can hit command left and nothing really happens except moving by frame. We actually have to double click. We actually have to select the space manually like so, and then heal that way. And it does, as you can see here, it didn't quite get it. So it's a little bit cumbersome to do and not anywhere near as facile as we can do it in Adobe Audition. Now, one of the most important things that we need to deal with is how do we make our sound better? And in Hindenburg, they have track based effects, which we love that idea, as opposed to burning in your effects into the clips themselves, which is awful. In this case, we have six slots that are available to us. But the problem is the plugins that come with Hindenburg are really, really quite simpleton, as opposed to the parametric EQ that comes with Audition. Here's another one here with their built in compressor, which basically is just, you know, a knob. Same with their denoise and noise reduction, just basically a knob, very, very little functionality if you needed any kind of uh, specificity or customization. And also you only have six slots, whereas Audition has 16 slots. That's a, a pretty far cry in terms of functionality between the two programs there. And lastly, the thing that really hurts is this is all you get. You don't get a mixer to be able to do automation and move things like this. This is kind of it. And hope that your compressor and keyframing is good enough. So that really leaves Hindenburg out 
as far as I'm concerned, from even doing a podcast that we're doing any kind of post in because I want to be able to do high-level mixing, parametric EQ, multiband compression, something where I can really customize and then be able to move the uh, faders and be able to mix the music and even do auto ducking, which unfortunately is not available here, but is available in spades in Adobe Audition. Now, although it does have auto leveling and magic levels, it's really, again, super simpleton. And if anything were to need customization, you're out of luck. And we can look at all kinds of things like different waveforms and zoom factors and all these kinds of things like this. But in the end, it just doesn't hold a candle to what Adobe Audition can do for us. So as you can see, Hindenburg is indeed a reduced version of a digital audio workstation, specifically for um, podcasts and you know audio casts, things like this. But even still, it's missing some pretty serious functionality that I know I would want to have if I were doing a podcast specifically around mixing, integration, ducking, these kinds of things that are just really not available to us in the same way that they're available in Adobe Audition. Not to mention if you were actually using Hindenburg for anything other than podcasts, you're really kind of in a pickle. So for me, I'm always going to choose Audition over Hindenburg or Audacity or any of these other you know, more specific digital audio, digital audio workstations. Why? Because I only have a small amount of time in my life to go learn a piece of software and get good at it. I'd rather learn a piece of software that I know I'm going to be using in a holistic fashion in all of my audio projects than have to learn this one and this one and the other one over here. I don't want to do that. I just want to learn one. And Audition is what I would do for a general scope uh, of getting my audio edited in general productions. Hopefully this video has been helpful to you. If so, please subscribe to us here on the channel and come visit us at cinemasound.com where we have hundreds, if not thousands of articles and videos to help you get that unfair competitive advantage in the Hollywood marketplace and the multimedia marketplace, that same advantage that Hollywood uses to get their powerful audio immersion. I want to make sure that you all have it. Until then, we'll see you in post. Even if you're